the evening of September 17th, the Syrian province of Latakia came under a large-scale aerial attack, which targeted a power station as well as two facilities belonging to the Syrian military. There were also reports on airstrikes in other parts of the country, but these were not confirmed. Syrian state media said that the missiles came from the sea, adding that a high number of them were intercepted. However, according to photos and videos, an unknown number of missiles did hit their targets. Pentagon spokesman Navy Commander Sean Robertson officially denied US involvement in the attack. On September the 18th, the Russian Defense Ministry revealed that the attack had been carried out by four Israeli F-16 warplanes. Furthermore, during the attack, a Russian IL-20 surveillance plane with 14 servicemen on board disappeared over the Mediterranean Sea. The ministry said that the plane was 35 kilometers off the coast of Syria, returning to the airbase of Khmeimim, when the mark of IL-20 disappeared from radar screens. At the same time, Russian radar screens fixed on missile launches from the French frigate Orvéon, which was in that area, the defense ministry added. Later, the Russian Defense Ministry added that the IL-20 plane was accidentally targeted by a Syrian S-200 missile. The incident was a result of the intentional actions of Israeli warplanes, which were hiding from Syrian fire behind the IL-20. The IL-20 surveillance plane is an electronic intelligence L-INT, platform, equipped with a wide range of antennae and infrared and optical sensors. It's interesting to note that the September 17th strike on Syria came just a few hours after Russian President Vladimir Putin and Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan agreed to establish a demilitarized zone between militants and government troops in the Syrian province of Idlib. We've agreed to create a demilitarized zone between government troops and militants before October 15th. The zone will be 15 to 20 kilometers deep with full withdrawal of hardline militants from there, including Chapat al-Nusra, now known as Hayat Tahrir al-Sham, Putin said, following face-to-face -face talks with his Turkish counterpart. All heavy weaponry, including battle tanks and artillery, should be withdrawn from the zone before October the 10th. The zone will be patrolled by Turkish and Russian forces. It's expected that roads between Aleppo and Hama and Aleppo and Latakia must be reopened for transit traffic before the end of the year. According to Putin, the agreement has general support from the Damascus government. However, it is still unclear how it will be possible to demilitarize a 15 to 20 kilometer deep zone, mostly controlled by Hayat Tahrir al-Sham and its allies, without employing a military option to force these militant groups to obey.